Hey there, welcome to another Path of Exile guide, this time with a Sorest Phantasm Necromancer. Right off the bat I need to clarify, this is not one of those hipster builds which, you know, has barely average damage but a quirky mechanic so bored people will play it because it's different. This is an absolute beast of a build with far more DPS and better defenses than both the Skellymancer or the old Zombie Mancer. In fact, apart from broken specters which get nerfed the next league or insanely expensive carrion golem builds, this will likely be the strongest summoner build you've ever played. Not only that, but since this is not a mainstream minion by any means, it's also very unlikely this will get nerfed anytime soon. On top of that, it's incredibly cheap with many of its gear pieces costing just a few chaos orbs and the build is able to clear tier 16 maps on a 5 link. And speaking of maps, you can run literally all map modes, including Reflect, No Leech or No Regen. You're also equally effective at clearing huge packs of mobs, as well as killing bosses. Poor Cyrus is not even able to do all his moves before your army kicks him into the next phase of the encounter. Finally, the build is very tanky, definitely hardcore viable with a few tweaks. I've been running Triple Beyond or Delirium maps without any issues and this is my go-to character for simulacrums as well. Before diving into the guide proper, just a reminder, if anything is unclear or you have any questions about the build, you can find me streaming on Twitch at twitch.tv slash navandis, link to the schedule in the pinned comment and video description. I'm live 4 or 5 times a week and you'll get to see every upcoming build being put together, leveled up and fine tuned before it becomes a guide such as this one. Finally, the most up to date path of building link will always be found in the pinned comment and video description. As usual, the guide is divided into 7 main sections, Build Overview, Passive Tree and Leveling, Ascendancy, Pantheon, Gems and Links, Gear, Flasks and Jewels, and finally Pros and Cons. So with that out of the way, let's start with the Build Overview. The build revolves around a very common and cheap unique item, the Solred Staff, which says trigger level 20 summon Phantasm skill when you consume a corpse. Phantasms are ghostly minion spellcasters which fire a projectile that deals physical damage and pierces all targets. By default, the staff can summon up to 10 phantasms, but by socketing a summon phantasm support gem in it, you can increase this cap up to 20 or 21. Another key aspect to keep in mind is that support gems socketed in this staff will affect all 21 phantasms without having to actually link them. You can literally have no links on your staff and your ghost will receive all the bonuses just fine. Since getting 6 sockets is really easy and cheap, you can have the equivalent of a 6 link main skill setup as early as level 60, allowing you to cruise through the last acts of the campaign or early atlas tiers. The way corpses are generated and consumed has no impact on the summon phantasms, so it doesn't matter if you produce the corpses yourself or if they resulted from killing enemies. Also, the number of phantasms summoned at once is equal to the number of corpses consumed. So, if you consume 5 corpses, you'll instantly gain 5 new ghosts. To make things incredibly easy for you, the build completely automates the process of generating and consuming corpses through a castwild channeling setup. Castwild channeling will trigger linked spells in a sequence as long as you're using a linked channel skill. The ideal skill for this purpose is Cyclone for a multitude of reasons. It allows you to move while channeling, it hits enemies so it can trigger various on-hit effects and it can be supported by Fortify, greatly boosting your defenses. So while cycloning around you'll trigger Desecrate which generates 5 corpses as well as Flesh Offering which will consume those, summoning ghosts and providing them a massive DPS buff. Keep in mind that you don't actually need to hit anything with Cyclone to generate and consume corpses and this is crucial against bosses as you can pre-summon all your ghosts before engaging. And since we're talking about damage, your phantasm's physical damage will be converted entirely into elemental, mostly called by using a dirt cheap item, the Triad Grip Gloves. This is done because scaling physical spell damage for minions is incredibly hard while converting it to elemental opens up a whole bunch of additional options such as elemental equilibrium, reducing enemies resistances etc. Finally, the build uses a few additional minions such as animate guardian or specters whose sole purpose is to provide various buffs to your phantasms. While it sounds like a lot to take in, don't worry, as usual, I'll talk more about these in the passives, gems and gearing sections respectively. And speaking of that, let's actually start with a passive tree and leveling. You start off as a witch and for the first 20-25 levels you can level up as a spellcaster using freezing pulse or arc. After that point you can switch to summoning skeletons and these bad boys will carry you through the story mode all the way up to level 60 when you can finally use the solarest stuff. You'll find leveling gem setups in the path of building guide. 
In the first 3 acts, you'll mainly focus on buffing your minions with Enduring Bond, Spiritual Command, Retribution and Grave Pact, which provide various damage stats such as Attack and Cast Speed. Follow up with Sacrifice and Death Attunement Wheel for minion life, resistances, as well as increasing the maximum number of Spectres you can summon. For yourself, it's mostly defensive passives, as your own damage is irrelevant as a summoner. As such, you pile up a whole bunch of life and armor with Heart and Soul, Discipline and Training and Sanctity. Don't forget that Act 2 brings with it the Deal with the Bandits quest, and for this build you need to kill them all. The bonuses they provide are pretty much useless for summoners, so the two passive points are clearly the way to go. In the next 3 acts, you'll keep busy by taking Righteous Army and Redemption for some extra damage, life, movement speed and resistances for your minions. Then focus on boosting your own HP and life regen with Heart of the Warrior, Warrior's Blood and Purity of Flesh. Finally, grab Sovereignty Will to increase the effect of your auras, as well as reduce their mana reservation cost, which will enable you to later use an additional aura. Pushing through to Act 9 requires the same approach, some damage for minions, some defense for yourself. First complete the entire life cluster around constitution passive and then drop 3 points in quick recovery. I know this seems like a boring way of spending your points, but trust me, they're more than necessary as defense is the absolute number one priority in Path of Exile. And while in the area, grab 2 jewel sockets which should be used to mostly buff your minions damage. At this point you should be pretty close to using the Solrest stuff and transitioning to being a full-blown phantasm necromancer. As such, this is the perfect time to get 2 critical keystones for the build, Elemental Equilibrium and Avatar of Fire. When you deal damage with a certain element, let's take for example Fire, Elemental Equilibrium increases that monster's fire resistance while lowering their cold and lightning ones by a very large amount. In turn, Avatar of Fire ensures that you, the summoner, will only deal fire damage. Now, in the build overview section, I've mentioned that your minions will be dealing mostly cold damage with some leftover lightning. So, when you put all these together, every time you hit an enemy, you'll deal only fire damage and lower its cold and lightning resistance. This in turn will greatly boost your minions DPS against them. As you finish the campaign and up to level 80, you'll begin working on the cluster jewels part of the tree. If you're unfamiliar with these, they're a special type of jewel which expand your tree with new passives, most of which are generally stronger than other available options. First you have a large cluster jewel and the passives you're looking for, in order of their importance, are the following, Call to the Slaughter, Renewal and Feasting Fiends. The first two are DPS ones, boosting your minions attack speed and damage, as well as granting them a chance to deal double damage while they're on full life. Feasting Fiends is more of a filler passive, but still quite useful as it increases the total HP and life regen for all your minions, which is rather important for your animate guardian and specters. Then there are two different medium cluster jewels, with the first one being crucial to your minion survivability. Blessed Rebirth will increase your minions HP by a large amount and will make them invulnerable for 4 seconds after being summoned. This is much more important than it might look at a first glance, as your phantasms don't have that much HP and without this passive they'll die before being able to deal most of their damage when running higher tier content. The second passive on this cluster jewel is Life from Death. Every time one of our minions dies, you gain a big life regen buff for 4 seconds, while the other minions recover 4% of their max life instantly. Now here's the catch, when you have the maximum number of phantasms already summoned and you create a few more, they will replace the oldest ones. However, in this particular case for phantasms, it counts as the minions dying and it will thus trigger this passive. And since you generally spawn 5 phantasms at a time, life from death will heal the rest of your army for 20% of their max life. This is a monumental amount of healing for your other minions, especially for the animate guardian and specters. Thanks to this passive, you'll be able to equip some insane damage boosting items on your guardian instead of defensive ones. The second medium cluster jewel is all about DPS and the two passives you're looking for are Vengeful Commander and Replenishing Presence. Both will boost the effect of your auras, which are a large part of your build's damage output. Finally, on the small cluster jewels, you're looking to get some extra life for yourself. Ideally, you don't want Fatal Passive, but since that can be rather expensive, you can definitely settle for the much cheaper Feast of Flesh instead. With the Cluster Jewels part of the tree complete, by level 90, take Devotion for a whole bunch of HP and a regular Jewel Socket on the way. And since this is the kind of build you can easily reach level 100 with, use any extra points you obtain to get Whirling Barrier, increasing your chance to block both spells and attacks, as well as these Hybrid Life plus Armor nodes. And that's about it for the passive tree and leveling. 
In the next section, I'll be covering the Ascendancy class, which improves pretty much every single aspect of this build. Summoning dead stuff to fight for you is clearly the signature of a necromancer, so that is what we'll be picking as the Ascendancy class. First points go into Mindless Aggression, a clear cut and efficient passive. It simply buffs the damage as well as cast speed and movement speed for your minions, nothing really complicated. After completing Cruel Labyrinth, follow up with Commander of Darkness. Both yourself and your minions get a large amount of damage and cast speed, as well as elemental resistance. While the damage bonuses are useless for you, 30% to all elemental resistances will greatly help with gearing, allowing more flexibility in choosing useful unique items. Third in line is Plague Bringer, a fairly simple passive. While there's at least one corpse near your enemies, they'll take more damage and deal less to you and your minions. And since you'll be generating corpses non-stop with your Cyclone and Castile channeling setup, this buff will be up permanently. Finally, with the last ascendancy points, take Bone Barrier, a really strong defensive layer for both yourself and your minions. First, you get a whole bunch of physical damage reduction, life and energy shield recovery. Your minions also gain 20% increased maximum life, a stat that you can never have too much of. In addition, you obtain the Bone Armor skill. When activated, it creates a shield on yourself and each of your minions, which absorbs up to 2200 damage from hits, removes bleeding and provides immunity to this ailment while the buff is up. Just remember to actually place this skill on your hotbar and use it as often as possible. With the Ascendancy out of the way, we can take a quick look at the Pantheon choices. Generally speaking, Pantheon choices are situational and there isn't a best pair that will outperform all others in any scenario. However, there are certain options that complement specific builds quite well in a wide range of situations. For this particular case, here are my recommendations. For the Major God, Soul of Lunaris. It provides quite a few bonuses to evasion and chance to dodge, as well as physical damage reduction and movement speed. In addition, you'll avoid projectiles that have chained. While this might not seem like much, keep in mind there are close to 30 minions around you at all times and projectiles can potentially chain from each of them to hit you. As for the minor god, the optimal choice is likely Soul of Grathkul. Since you're operating in melee range while cycloning, you'll likely receive a significant amount of hits. Reducing enemies attack speed as well as incoming physical damage will definitely keep you somewhat safer. Having covered the Pantheon choices, we can now focus on one of the most important aspects of any build, gems and links. High Sleek has introduced alternate qualities for both active skills and support gems. These provide different bonuses than the default versions of the gems and in some cases they might add a bit more damage or utility. While none of these are mandatory nor do they add a lot of DPS, you'll find the alternate quality gems in the path of building guide aid. Some might be dirt cheap, while some might cost over 50 chaos, so it's up to you if you wish to invest anything into them. With that out of the way, as usual, I start off with the main skill, which doesn't really exist for this build. As I've said in the build overview section, the active skill is actually baked into Solrest stuff, so all the other gems we'll be socketing in it are supports. You also do not need to link them, so just having 6 sockets is enough. Just keep in mind they need to be socketed in the stuff, not anywhere else. First gem you'll be using is Summon Phantasm, which, even though has the same name as the skill inside your stuff, is actually a support gem. For this particular build, you can ignore most of what's written on the gem's description. Its only purpose is to increase the maximum number of phantasms you can summon by 10. In fact, if you can get a level 21 gem through corruption, the cap will be increased by 11 instead. Second support is a very simple one, Minion Damage. As the name indicates it, it simply adds a shit ton of extra damage to your phantasms. Then you have the really interesting Predator support, which has both a passive and an active component. The passive part, quite similar to the previous support, just adds some additional damage to your ghosts. However, it also provides you with the active Mark Prey skill. This instant cast spell can be used while channeling Cyclone and applied to a single target. That enemy will take significantly more damage and will also force your phantasms to attack it. I use it against any boss or tough target I wish to prioritize, but also as a means of controlling my ghosts. One perfect example is marking an enemy that has the aura, allies cannot die. Instead of just relying on your minions to eventually kill that target, I order them to do it immediately. Next two supports, Elemental Focus and Control Destruction, are increasing the elemental and spell damage dealt by your phantasms, while preventing them from applying elemental ailments and lowers their crit chance. Neither downside is even remotely significant. Phantasms have an abysmally low critical strike chance already, and that would also make applying any ailments unreliable. Finally, the last support gem here is Lesser Multiple Projectiles. 
Since your ghosts are firing spell projectiles, it makes sense to increase their number to make map clearing much smoother. However, against any endgame boss, I swap this gem with Hypothermia. It takes 1 second and will increase your damage by about 40%. Hypothermia adds tremendous more damage against chilled targets and while your phantasms cannot chill, the build uses Skitterbot's aura to take care of that. Next setup is the engine driving the entire build, Cyclone plus Castile Channeling. If you've watched the build overview section, this should come as no surprise. In this case, Cyclone is the skill which will trigger other link spells as you keep channeling it. First we have Desecrate which spawns 5 corpses and then Flesh Offering which consumes up to 5 corpses to provide a cast speed and movement speed buff to all nearby minions. More importantly however, for each corpse consumed by Flesh Offering, a phantasm will be summoned by the Soul Rest staff. Then add Frost Bomb, a spell which creates a pulsating crystal on the ground that lowers the cold resistance of nearby enemies. It also reduces life and energy shield regen for the affected targets which can come in handy in certain fights. Finally, Socket in Fortify Support, which will grant you the aptly named Fortify buff when you hit a target with Cyclone. This buff will greatly reduce the damage you take from hits, which is a must-have considering you're constantly spinning through packs of enemies. In case you're already getting the Fortify buff from your Animate Guardian, you can replace this gem with either Infuse Channeling for additional defense or Blade Blast for extra damage. Up next is your aura setup and the only way you can fit all of them is if you're using the recommended best in slot helmet devouring diadem as auras socketed in it will reserve significantly less mana. You'll be using hatred and zealotry increasing your minions cold and spell damage respectively as well as summon skitterbots. This aura spawns two invincible robotic spiders which will chill and shock all nearby enemies. As mentioned earlier not only will chilling slow down targets but also enable hypothermia's damage bonus. Shocked enemies take 50% more damage on top of that, making this aura extremely valuable for this build. Finally add Generosity Support, which will boost the effect of linked auras, but their bonuses will no longer apply to you. This is yet another case of a non-existent downside, as you don't care at all about the damage you're dealing yourself. Next gen setup brings a few additional minions, whose sole purpose is to buff the phantasms and yourself to some extent. First is Animate Guardian, one of the most interesting minions in the game. The Guardian is summoned by casting spells on items dropped on the ground, which the resulting minion will actually equip and use. As such, you want to give it gear that grants bonuses to allies, aka you and the other minions. But I'll go over the best items for your Guardian in the gearing section. For now, I'll mention that it can use weapons, shields, helmet, body armor, gloves and boots. However, be warned, if the animate Guardian dies, all its gear is permanently lost. While leveling, only give it random rare items or cheap uniques that you don't need or would otherwise vendor. Later in the game, with enough minion defense and health passives, as well as leveling the gem itself, the Guardian will have over 60k life and regenerate close to 10,000 life per second. As long as you keep spinning to generate and consume corpses, as well as replace all phantasms with new ones, your Guardian will stay alive. However, just because I've seen this happen so many times before, do not take your animate guardian into holds of the Grandmaster's map. That's a PvP map and your guardian will die and you lose all its gear. Then the second gem in this setup is Ray Spectre, another really cool minion which is summoned using the bodies of dead monsters. As the name implies it, this minion is a ghost of that respective monster and it will inherit all the attributes and skills it had while it was alive. Since you're not looking for damage dealing specters, but rather ones that will help the other minions, the best option is to use 3 Carnage Chieftains. The Chieftains periodically cast a spell which grants frenzy charges to all allies. These in turn provide a great deal of damage and cast speed, perfect for your phantasms. Carnage Chieftains can be found in Act 2 Old Fields map and it's not necessary to actually kill these mobs to obtain their corpses. It's enough to teleport in this area and cast Desecrate and this will spawn corpses that belong to that zone. Hold the A key pressed and select the appropriate corpse, then cast Ray Spectre. And that's about it. The good part is that once a certain monster has been added to Desecrate's corpse pool, it will appear when using the skill in other areas or your hideout. Anyway, don't worry too much about this entire process, since Spectres will die very rarely, if at all, unless you really mess something up. Now coming back to the gen setup, so far you have Animated Guardian and Ray Spectre. The third gem is Blood Magic. This allows your specters to spend a small amount of life instead of mana to cast their spell. This is necessary because they have a tiny mana pool which would otherwise be exhausted after casting Mass Frenzy once or twice. Last gem in this setup is Minion Life Support. 
These summons are not there to deal damage, but only as a source of buff bots, so you need to make sure they survive. You also don't want to go through a hassle of resummoning specters too often or losing gear from animated guardian. Next gen setup is a bit of a strange one, and it's more or less an improvisation that's being forced on us by the unique gloves used in this build, the Triad Grip. More specifically, the gloves say minions convert 25% of physical damage to cold damage per green socket. Similarly, red and blue sockets would convert their damage to fire or lightning respectively. However, as I mentioned earlier in the build overview section, you need to convert most of the phantasm's damage to cold, as scaling physical damage for them is almost impossible. Other elements are also worse, for reasons that go beyond the purpose of this guide. So, the setup consists in an Ice Golem, linked with Feeding Frenzy and Culling Strike, as well as a Sniper's Mark Curse. We went with an Ice Golem because it's literally the only green gem permanent minion in the game. We needed a minion because we wanted to trigger the Feeding Frenzy buff, which will grant a huge damage boost to all other minions. In fact, Feeding Frenzy is so strong that it was acceptable to have a blue socket instead of a green one on these gloves and go with a 75% cold, 25% lightning damage conversion. Culling Strike support will cause your golem's hits to instantly kill any target that's at or below 10% HP. And yes, that applies to bosses as well, including big boys like Cirrus or Shaper. Lastly, Sniper Mark Curse will cause the enemy to take a huge amount of extra damage from projectiles. Keep in mind that, since Heist League, the Mark category of curses can only be applied to a single target at a time, so it's really only meant to be used versus bosses. Finally, you have two really important utility skills, which will only fit if you're using unset base rings with their gem socket implicit. First, there's Flame Dash, the build mobility skill, and the second ability is Convocation. This instant cast spell will summon all your minions at your current position and grant them a solid life regen buff. It might not seem like much, but it's practically one of the only ways you can directly control your minions. It's a crucial tool for pulling them out of dangerous places, helping them navigate rooms and doors, or to simply bring them to your aid if you're getting hammered. With the gems out of the way, it's time to take a look at the recommended gear for this build. In this section, for each gear slot, I will outline three tiers, basic, mid-tier and best in slot. Generally speaking, prices increase significantly with each tier, but so do the benefits that the items bring. With this build, you don't care at all about any kind of affixes that add damage to yourself, but only ones granting resistances, attributes, defenses, and maybe some minion damage or movement speed if you can afford those. Your main goal is to cap your resistances and get as much life as possible while equipping as many of the best in slot unique items as possible. The notes tab in the Path of Building guide contains trade links to help you find and buy the necessary gear. You can tweak the filters according to your budget and character at that time. Starting from the top, a very good basic tier helmet is the unique Skull Head. It provides decent life and resistances, along with a whole bunch of defensive stats for your minions, keeping them alive while you progress to the harder content. As for mid tier and best in slot, the optimal choice is Devouring Diadem, which should be relatively cheap beyond the first week of a new league. The first great bonus it provides is 20% reduced mana reservation cost for auras that are socketed in it. This allows you to squeeze in summon skitterbots, a critical component for the build. In addition, it has the Feast of Flesh ability, an automatic skill which triggers every 5 seconds and consumes up to 10 nearby corpses, healing 400 life for each corpse. In most heavy combat situations, this translates to a 4000 life heal every 5 seconds, an amazing defensive mechanism. Oh yeah, and this will summon phantasms as well, for each corpse it consumes. On top of that, Devouring Diadem provides the Eldritch Battery Keystone. With this passive, you first spend Energy Shield to cast spells instead of mana. This in turn allows you to reserve your entire mana pool with auras, as you don't need to keep any mana for channeling Cyclone or any other ability. Moving on to your weapon, there's really a single choice here, the Soul Rest Staff. It's a very common and cheap unique, which you don't need to link. Ideally, look for one with a high physical damage for minions roll. All other variable modes are completely irrelevant for this build. Then get 6 sockets on it and you're good to go. Up next is the body armor and for basic and mid tier you're looking at 5 or 6 links, 80 plus flat life and 90 plus elemental resistances. Percentage increased maximum life, chaos resistance or dex would also be great secondary modes to have on this slot. As for best in slot, upgrade to a 6 link that has pretty much the same affixes as the mid tier armor, but with the addition of nearby enemies are blinded mod. This can be found on redeemer influenced armors, and affected enemies will have, on average, 50% less chance to hit you or your minions. 
is a really strong defensive mechanism, more valuable than pretty much anything else you could get on this gear slot. Finally, if you can afford it, or you're lucky enough to find a cheap one, the addition of a percentage increased effect of non-cursoras from your skill suffix will give you a fair amount of extra damage. Moving on to gloves, quite similar to your weapon, there's really a single option here, a pair of triad grip. These are always really cheap and have never been above one chaos orb since they were added to the game, so there's no reason to look for any other gloves. Just a reminder, you absolutely need to have 3 green sockets and a blue one on these gloves. I strongly recommend using your hideout crafting bench to obtain the required colors rather than looking to buy them directly like that. With boots, the choices are quite simple. This is a slot where you need to stack up as much resistance as possible. On basic and mid tier ones, you're looking for at least 60 maximum life, 70 plus elemental resistances, movement speed and some dex. For best in slot, the usual deal. Same mods, but higher numeric values and in addition, try to get some chance to dodge spells or attacks. While you're not an avoidance type of character, bits and pieces of dodge and evasion here and there will add up and make you significantly more tanky. Moving on to your belt, quite similar to boots, this is a slot where you should stack up as much life and resistances as possible, including chaos resistance. In addition to that, at mid tier you should try and get a Stygian Vice belt with similar affixes but with the added bonus of an abyssal socket. Even an average jewel will provide much more benefits without breaking the bank. Finally, for best in slot, I recommend another really common and cheap unique, the Darkness Enthroned belt. This item allows you to socket 2 abyss jewels in it and it will boost all their bonuses by 75%. At a first glance, this might not seem like a big deal, but let's do a bit of math. An average Abyss Jewel will have around 30 maximum life on it. With 2 of them and a 75% bonus, that's actually 105 life which is on par with a decent Stygian Vice Belt and a Socketed Jewel. Pretty much the same for resistances. You can easily get 70 or 80 with 2 average Abyss Jewels and the Belt's bonus. Now here's the catch, Jewels can have up to 4 mods and Ghastly Eyes in particular are excellent for boosting your minion's damage. Meanwhile, regular Belts have 0 possible affixes that increase minion's DPS. So not only are you getting a lot of additional damage from a slot that normally doesn't provide any, but you also have the flexibility of going with pure DPS jewels if you've already kept your resistances with other items. With basic amulets is the same familiar story, life, elemental resistances, perhaps some dexterity or some chaos resistance, as much as you need or you can afford of each. Mid tier and best in slot are one and the same item, the fairly common Jinx Juju. Its main selling point is that 10% of incoming damage will go to your specters instead of you divided among all of them. That might not sound like much, but it's almost the same as having 10% more life while at least one specter is alive. On top of that, it buffs the effect of your auras by quite a bit and since the build sports a few of those, it does add up to a significant amount of damage. Finally, it comes with a whole bunch of decks and chaos resistance, both more than welcome for this build. Amulets can also be anointed using oils dropped from Blight Encounters to add a notable passive to them without changing the item in any other way. For this build, my top recommendation is Ravenous Horde, which will increase your minion's damage, cast speed and movement speed, as well as give them a chance to gain Onslaught buff on kill. This in turn will further boost their cast speed and movement speed, a great perk while mapping. If you're looking for a defensive option for yourself, then Golem's Blood is the perfect choice as you get quite a bit of extra HP and life regen. On the other hand, if you feel like you need to protect your minions some more, then Grave Intentions is your best bet. The extra chaos resistance is especially important to your animate guardian, as that's probably its only weak spot. Moving on to rings, their sole purpose is to help cap your elemental resistances, get enough decks to level up your gems and as much life as possible. So for basic tier, look for at least 60 plus life and over 60 total elemental resistances. Since you don't care at all about damage affixes for yourself, it should be really easy and cheap to find such rings. Mid tier ones have pretty much the same affixes, with higher numeric values and on an unset ring base. These come with a socket where you can place the utility skills I've mentioned in the gem section. Finally, best in slot rings are similar with mid tier ones but with an open suffix where you can craft plus one to minimum endurance charges. This mod provides a guaranteed permanent endurance charge which you don't need to generate and it's never consumed. In turn, Endurance Charges grant you additional physical damage reduction and elemental resistances. Up next are Jewels, an excellent source of DPS, life for both yourself and minions, and utility. This is doubly true when using the best in slot belt, so don't ignore or downplay their importance. Since there aren't any unique Jewels worth using, you're mostly looking for ghastly eyes. The number one priority is to try and get flat life on every single Jewel you'll have. 
The second thing you're looking for on at least one Abyss Jewel is minions have a chance to hinder enemies with spells with 30% reduced movement speed. No matter how low the chance, with at least 20 ghosts firing a storm of projectiles everywhere, all mobs will be slowed down. Everything else is dedicated to filling in any resistance holes, getting enough dexterity and pure damage mods. Minions deal extra physical or cold damage, minions have increased cast speed, minions have increased movement speed, etc. I can't list them all here, but you can find trade links in the notes tab of the Path of Building guide. As for the cluster jewels, I've already talked about the passives you're looking for in the passive tree section, so check that out if you skipped it. Here I'll just mention the overall structure of the cluster jewels. The large one should have maximum 9 passives, 3 significant ones, 2 jewel sockets and 3 or 4 minor. The medium cluster jewels should have maximum 5 passives, 2 significant ones, 1 jewel socket and 1 or 2 minor passives. Finally, the cluster jewel can have 2 or 3 passives, one being a mandatory significant. If the cluster jewels have more total passives than what I've listed, you'll be wasting more points than necessary. Finally, let's talk about flasks. First, you need a seeding Divine Life Flask of Dowsing or Curing. Instant healing is a real lifesaver and removing ignites or poisons will really help with your survivability. Normally, I'd go with the Staunching Flask for bleeding removal, but that's taken care of by the Bone Armor skill. Second one is a Chemist Basalt Flask of Heat for some additional physical damage reduction as well as freeze immunity. Getting frozen is pretty much a death sentence in high level maps, so this provides a reliable way of preventing that. Third is a Chemist Quicksilver Flask of Adrenaline to help you move around faster. Since channeling Cyclone reduces your movement speed by a fair amount, this flask will offset that downside to some extent. Then you have a Rumi's Concoction Granite Flask. This is yet another great defensive flask that will greatly boost your chance to block as well as physical damage mitigation with its massive plus 3000 armor buff. Finally, there's an Experimenter Quartz Flask of Warding. The additional chance to dodge both spells and attacks is a solid defensive layer on top of stuff like evasion and block. Warding suffix is also mandatory while mapping for curse removal and immunity. Now, as promised in the gem section, I will also briefly cover the best gear for an animated guardian. The cheap setup is made out of Leercast helmet, Dying Breath stuff, Victarious Flights boots, Ambush Charge body armor and a pair of rare gloves with 80 plus life and 20 plus chaos resistance. For the optimal gear, replace the body armor with Gratful Spelt for a huge amount of life regen. This is the linchpin for your guardian's defenses, an item that will make him almost immortal, so don't upgrade any of its other gear pieces until you get this one, otherwise you run the risk of your guardian dying while wearing the other expensive items. The optimal weapon is the amazing Kingmaker Axe. This provides a permanent 45 buff to nearby allies, yourself included, as well as culling strike. Finally, the best in slot helmet is the insane Crown of the Tyrant. This item can have a single socket, and if that socket is green, it will add an insane amount of base cold damage to your minions. So whatever you do, make absolutely certain you're first coloring the socket green before equipping this item on your guardian. On top of that, this helmet reduces nearby enemies' elemental resistances, further increasing the damage they take from your phantasms. Now, to wrap up the gearing section, here are some excellent leveling uniques which will help you easily progress to the campaign. With the gearing out of the way, it's time to take a final look at the pros and cons of the build so you can understand if it's what you're looking for. Starting off with the pros, an excellent league starter, it's very cheap to gear up for the first few tiers of mapping and this will help you generate currency quick and get a head start. Dirt cheap, really the only somewhat expensive items in this build are the cluster jewels and animate guardian best in slot gear, everything else is almost free. Beginner friendly, the build was definitely complicated to design and put together, but it's an absolute beginner's dream to play. You have very few buttons to press, most of the stuff is automated and everything just works. Insane clearing speed, the build is very efficient at quickly killing large packs of mobs without any downtime. Your phantasms kill everything from afar without having to lead or control them. Superb boss killer, amazingly enough, the build is not only awesome at mapping, but equally good at killing bosses. You swap a single gem and suddenly you're a god slayer. Really solid defenses, you have layers upon layers of damage reduction, avoidance, block chance and an insane amount of life regen. As for the cons, reliance on specific unique items. The build needs at least two very specific unique items to work properly and while both of them are very common and cheap, the build might not lend itself well to solo self found. You need to level up as a Skellymancer. Since the build relies on the baked in ability to summon phantasms of the soul rest stuff, you'll need to level up as a different type of summoner until you get this item. Using skeletons however is extremely easy and makes for truly carefree leveling. 
Learn anything new, Exile? If you did, then you'll probably be happy to hear there are more videos coming up in the near future with more exciting builds to try. Make sure not to miss them by subscribing to the channel so you get notified when that happens. And while you're at it, why not like this video as well or drop a comment down below to let me know your thoughts. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.